That's not good. Oh, no, 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 that. That's not good. That valve, um, real easy fix, actually. I could uh, just strip out, not strip out, I'm sorry. I could just take the uh, nut off and take the uh, packing out. Then there's a stopper at the end of it that will shut the water off. This valve goes to my outside water spigot, so I'm not really that concerned about it right now. The reason I'm doing this is because we got a fire burning permit so I could burn some brush. And part of the rules before they will activate it is I have to have a hose uh, out by the fire. I can't do that if this is leaking. Um, I will show you how to do that, but I'm going to show you with the outside spigot because that one actually is uh, doesn't even shut off now. This is what I'm going to replace that valve with. It's a compression fitting valve um, on both ends. This here will basically just kind of screw down. I'll show you how that all works when we get it put together. The main reason I'm changing the inside valve is I don't particularly care for those multi-twist valves. Packing on them does come, uh, you know, wear out over time. I much prefer these types of valves because I, I like just the quarter turn to shut it off rather than the multi-turn. The biggest issue with a valve like this is you can shut it off real quick and what happens is the pipes will vibrate. It makes a loud bang. And a lot of people don't like that. Um, it's, this is great for a real quick shut off if you spring a leak somewhere. This is in the closed position. When I open it, you can see water can now flow through it. This is what they call a compression fitting. I'm gonna show you how these all go on. You got a nut right here that comes off and there's a brass fitting inside. Um, and you're just gonna be sliding this on. So there's no soldering involved in this. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you got your main valve shut off like so and what I'm gonna do up here is I'm gonna open this that means it's gonna leak a little bit and there it goes all right now you also should make sure you open the uh, lowest point valve that way the water all drains out you're gonna have water drip out of this once you cut through um, so you want to make sure that you do have a bucket of some sort beneath or ready to catch water that drips. This here is your pipe cutter. You're just going to fit her in like so and torque her down right next to the fitting. And then you're just going to I do expect that I'll have some water leak once I get through this pipe. It gets a little stiff when you first torque it down. starting to there goes some water oh there goes my light all right now that's cut there ah water's going all down my arm and we'll bring this up and catch all that water Just let that water drip out. Okay, I'm going to put the valve on first. I'm thinking, well, anyway, you're going to need your the nut first. And then the brass fitting. All right, those are on. 
and we're going to situate this that way and main reason I was doing that is what I was going to do was I was going to put this on and put it in the shut off position so I'd have less water dripping because I didn't know how long that water was going to take to drip out but it looks like I don't have to worry about it now So, I cut that pipe too short, and now I have to go out and see if I can get another one of these. I was almost going to do this last night, and well, it was a good thing I didn't, because then the hardware store wouldn't have been open. <laughs> Can we drive any f I need to push. Dude, really? What is your major malfunction? That place is called Roy Boys, or at least that's what we used to call it, us old timers. Um, you're basically, you're just your local um, hardware store, you know, privately owned, um, although that is a chain. Uh, those places are pretty nice to go into because you get a lot of help in there, unlike going into, say, Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, you go in there and usually I end up, I know more than uh, anybody in there that's working. This place, um, they know about as much as I do, uh, maybe a little bit more. Instead of cutting it, what I should have done, except I don't have a torch. So I should have sweated the joint out. And that way I wouldn't have cut too short. Alright, so I ended up, I cut the pipe too short, had to go up to the hardware store and buy some more pipe. But anyway, whoops, what am I doing that goes the other way? Now this is just going to fit in 
something like that i don't have enough room right now i'm gonna have to loosen up the outside so i can fit that back in but basically you should leave enough space to fit between here and here that way the compression fitting will actually compress sand it down just a little bit want it to leak How's this other side? Uh, that does appear to be on. Yep, they're both on. This has to be straight as possible or else it won't seal once the uh, compression fittings compress. Luckily, down here I have a flexible hose uh, here with my main line. I never really liked that, but I'm kind of glad it is like that now. Although, I suppose if somebody clamped it better up here, that might have uh, helped too. But, all right, now it's just a matter of talking those down. Okay. So now we can just... You want to hold this valve to make sure it doesn't start turning on you. other side and got my room to maneuver in here now that's starting to turn all right hope that's tight enough we'll find out when we turn the water on okay on that'll be off why do I hear water running air pockets I don't know I don't have any leaks here seems there are no leaks here this is off so I shouldn't have a leak behind it oh got a leak on the other side all right we have to torque that one down a little more all right well that's not too bad only one leak I still gotta I got this one here to slow down quite a bit we need to talk down on this one and this one we get little tiny drips I didn't record the last time I was out here um, what I found was happening this one right here when I no not that one when I was talking on this one that one there loosened up so what we're gonna do here shut my water off first there we go I'm gonna hold this one in place and 
this has been it's been on for about an hour so these drips are really small and the wire is in the way move over loosened up on me ah. Ah, I can't get on it now Alright, so get a little torque on this, but we'll hold the other one in place. Alright, alright. Now this time I'm gonna to try to see if I can hold the body and get a little more of a torque on this one. Probably hold the body right in here. And I'm just gonna watch that other one make sure she don't turn, I hope. <clears throat> All right, that'll hopefully do it. And we'll just dry all that off. And that one there still looks like she's got a leak. That's not even under pressure at this point. All right, well, let's get in there and try to talk a little more. Okay, get some water on here. All right, that water's on. All right, that one there might still need a little more torquing. And uh, we'll dry those off and give it another 10, 20 minutes. Come back and make sure that She's not dripping anymore. Okay. It looks like everybody's dry. So this is a pretty cool trick that I learned a while ago. That's stuff that you use to prime your PVC with. You can just take it right there onto the lettering that's on the handle and you can wipe off the print now what's cool about doing that is then you can take a marker of course this marker here is just temporary for now because i'm going to have to get a different one this one ain't permanent and you can mark it like yeah outside Probably not the best way to do it. But that way you'll know which valve that is. But everything is dry. It's been a good half hour to an hour now.
wanted to get myself a cold snack. The original intent of this video had nothing to do with installing a frost-free silcock. In hindsight, I think I, after I had cut that too short, I probably would have kept on filming. I'm still learning here, so bear with me a little bit, if you will. But before we wrap all this up, let's just go over a few of the uh, you know finer points that I did run into with this, and uh, then we can close this video out. This portion up here, where you see the the metal. It looks like uh, silver steel. That and the copper pipe, I basically assembled outside of the uh, the house. Um, actually, I did it in my living room, and I torqued those uh, down um, outside of it. And then I slid this in, and made sure that you know this pipe here was then a lot longer than where the valve is. I then uh, basically marked where my pipe was going to be cut. I cut it right there, and then I put the two of them together. Um, I wouldn't do it this way myself. Um, it's interesting, after I had looked it up online, uh, after I was all finished, I couldn't find any videos where somebody had actually used uh, compression fittings for the for this kind of a setup. The only thing I ever did find was somebody, you know, people would use the... Uh, female end and uh solder on the um the end after they had you know tightened it up onto the outside water spigot uh the other method i saw was using shark bite this method i've never seen done uh, why do i suspect that the reason there aren't any videos is because it's not supposed to be done i do know compression fittings work real well i've used them all oh, for years on cars i put them in brake lines uh, brake lines will deliver up to about 800 psi uh, while your line inside your house is probably only going to deliver up about maybe I don't know 60 psi uh, 80 on a good day uh, this town I'm going to say we don't ever go much beyond 80 psi the only concern I think I would have is vibration um, there's no vibration in the pipes here but I do think that we might have an issue with the fact that you're going to be taking the hose off you know, putting it back on outside. That could cause some vibration. That could be a concern. I don't know, we'll see. If there are any plumbers out there, drop your comments down there at the bottom and let us know. I'm not a plumber. I play one on YouTube sometimes. No, drop your comments below, I wanna know. This compression fitting and that one up there. Those two have been in for about four years now when I remodeled my bathroom. Those I put in so that I could have a shut off for the upstairs sink in case you have developed a little leak up there. I wouldn't have to shut the water off to the whole house and I could shut off just the water up there. Um, they've held up pretty well. So, you know, they still work real well. Here we go. I'm going to prove myself wrong here. Which way does this turn? And there we go. And that's off. As you can see, this here still works. And that one's a little stiff. Probably should exercise that one a little more. That's it on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I got to get going. I got to go pick up my grandson. Bye.